Hey all, today we are talking through how we made this Temple Tower map. A map which is designed for the party to sneak their way through and steal a journal that is on the top floor. And while this map was planned for a stealth quest, this could easily be turned into a battle map or really used in any other scenario. This map is also part of a greater quest which already has its own video on the channel. So you can check that out if you're interested. Also we made the quest and the map over on Twitch, so join us there if you want to help make D&D resources with us. And if you want access to them, then everything that I've ever made is available through the Patreon. So the actual map design. We started making this map with a few key prompts. We knew this temple tower was where the ruling religious leaders live, and we knew this was going to be a stealth mission where the party's aim was to steal a book from the town's leader. More than enough to start. With this in mind, we kicked off by choosing the amount of floors to use, and after briefly considering six floors, which would fit the exterior of the tower, we decided to go for four bigger, more fleshed out levels instead, because this better encapsulated the gameplay we were trying to achieve. I also wanted to make the floors on the same map, rather than having four maps, this means all the party can be on the same map at once, making the party's plans easier to coordinate while also making it easier to DM. I then dived into making the bottom floor, which I wanted to have as a sort of atrium area, and then instantly moved on to making level two like a maniac, only really establishing that I wanted the levels to have different floor colors, so they have some different energy. After I composed myself and realized I probably needed a plan, I wrote down a general guide to the floors of which we could go off. The bottom floor would be the main temple, this is where the public have access to and is more or less a public space. Everything from level 2 up is private space, meaning to access this the party will need to stealth or at least have some monkly disguises. Level 2 would be the monk quarters for the general monks, level 3 would be the common area slash kitchen, and level 4 would be where the elite religious oligarchs of the town reside. A highly restricted area off limits to everyone but the oligarchs. So let's talk about level 2, which is basically where I started. I decided I wanted to make the level a little bit of a maze of which the party would have to weave their way through. How I imagine this map working in game is the party don't know where the stairs are and need to try to find them to make their way up the tower. The various rooms they check in all have a variety of obstacles and loot that they can investigate if they choose. The party should be aware that the temple tower is likely filled with valuable resources and exploring might be worth their time. However, it's also a fairly populated building and walking around it is going to be no easy task. After establishing the blueprint of the floor, I decided to put the stairs not at the very end, but nearish the end. Some of the more valuable loot will be further along the maze, so there's a classic risk versus reward here. After this, I got to work interior designing the rooms. As this is the section for the general monks, I figured having them mostly be shared rooms would make the most sense. I also decided to put a library in this weird long rectangle room because I thought a bedroom would look strange and I was really happy with the result. I decided to move on to level 3 at this point, but I'll explain what I did for the rest of level 2 now. It's pretty simple. I made a bunch of bedrooms. I put in a mix of one person, two person, and four person bedrooms as a way to show a slight hierarchy in the general monk populace. It's not simply that there's the leader, the other oligarchs, and then all the rest of the monk population are on the same level. No, there's a general tier system all the way down, and the bedroom sizing sort of represents this. For each of the rooms, I tried to make them a blend of similar to each other, but also notably different in design and decoration. The rooms were never symmetrical because I wanted to show that the inhabitants had control over their own interior design, and the beds were an array of colors to further highlight this. On top of the placement of furniture, I made sure everyone had a unique item on their bedside table. With this said, everyone does have a bedside table showing the uniformity within the group, but everyone has something unique on it displaying the individualism. Within these rooms, we also placed a few special items, which I'll talk about at the very end. On to level three, and I decided to have the staircases visually apparent on both the upper and lower level floors to make the blueprint of the levels easier to follow for the party. For this level, I decided there'd be four main rooms, a common area, a dining hall, a kitchen, and a storage room. The floor plan was another change of pace. Instead of being tight winding corridors, this area was meant to juxtapose level two by having having nice open rooms, with the staircase to the highly restricted level 4 being in full view of the dining room, the biggest, busiest room in the entire tower. The purpose of making 
these two floors quite different to make the stealthing the party need to do around them different experiences as well. Maybe they need to try different approaches and can't just do the exact same thing. As we were making the dining hall and kitchen, I also decided to move away from the square rectangle design most buildings have and put in a few diagonal walls. While leading to slightly more interesting design, it also represents the less rigid nature of the oligarchs who are corrupt and wickedly wild in their approach to life and governance. I also decided that we'd include some archways rather than just doors everywhere because this is a more open space. Fleshing out the rooms, I made the storage area first because that was the easiest to do. Filling it out with barrels, crates, and one unique box, which may have special magical components for the party to find. Or it could just be, you know, a box. Whatever. When making the dining room, I kept the decorations simple. Tables, chairs, food on top, not much more to it than that. And while I did put down plates, I didn't put any people on the map because where the people are is the choice of the DM. Moving on to the common area, I equally wanted a fairly simple design. A nice fireplace at the end of the room with a few chairs and couches for the monks to rest. The walls were populated with some classic bookshelves, along with my go-to decoration tactic of having an empty shelf and filling it with various knickknacks. In this room, I used used a different classic go-to tactic, which is getting any circular thing in incarnate. A plate, a pillar, a table, whatever. Then putting a plant or tree inside it and it looks like a pot plant. Great. In my head, I then thought, great, I'm done with this level, let's move on, before way later realizing I had entirely neglected the kitchen, which I'll talk about now for the sake of linearity. I couldn't find anything that resembled kitchen benches and after trying a few objects I went with boxes that I made rather large and I think worked pretty well. I then dropped in a sink and a stove then placed some food on top. I was pretty pleased with this section down the bottom where I created the effect of a plate tower by layering a few plates on top of each other while having the table next to it filled with boxes that have forks knives and spoons, which I think captures the spirit of a kind of communal eating area that I've certainly seen in real life. I then fleshed out the small staircase room, which I later made a lot smaller, expanding out the storage room. I also added an archway rather than a door, but kept some walls from which the party could peek behind. Moving on to level four, there was one main room we needed to make, the leaders of the town's room, the same room the party needed to break into. This room would have two separate components, the bed area and the study, with the journal sitting on top of the desk. I wanted to make it the nicest and largest room because they're the leader, so that's like, pretty standard. I picked purple as a theme because purple screams regal, but it also screams conspicuous consumption. This leader is getting purple couches and bed linens, not because they work in the space, but because they think that is what a wealthy leader should do. So while I think the room looks nice-ish, I think it's also a bit mismatched and a little garish, an interior design choice we've weaved into the owner's personality. At some point, I also made the leader's carpet a different style from the rest of the floor to reinforce their authority. It's a small touch, but I think it's nice. Blueprint-wise, I continued to lean away from the straight line rectangle rooms and made some of them a little crooked. While doing this, I found the walls were intersecting slightly strangely, but instead of fixing it, I just let it be part of the narrative. This building, after all, was built quickly and cynically as a way to assert religious authority over the region, something these religious oligarchs only did because they're using the religion to build power and wealth, not because they care about the religion at all. So having the temple somewhat poorly designed and constructed shows the lack of care the leaders actually put into this supposed center of religion. Similar to how I gave each bedside table a unique item, so the monks that sleep there have some slightly defining personality, I wanted to pick a theme for each of the oligarchs' bedrooms to help differentiate them from each other, picking a few items which would also allow for easier characterization down the line. We ended up with one of the oligarchs having an alchemy sciencey vibe in their room, another had vampire hunting gear along with the weapons rack, the third Gilderoyan had many jewels and coins which also act as some nice loot at the far, far end end of the tower, while the Prahansian has the worst room by the stairs, the one that's also the most modestly decorated. And with that, we capped off level four, our third completed level. So we descend to the first and final floor. I decided to move the structures around and reorient my original vision now that I had a much better grasp on what the tower was. I decided to have four main rooms. Firstly, the entryway, which I shrunk down quite substantially. Next, we had a prison cell, which was related to a trap in the building, which I'll talk about in the traps and items section. But the two big kahunas of this level are firstly, the prayer room. We didn't have a lot of space, so we didn't make it a massive hall. And in turn, we're like, 
yeah, this isn't a religion that practices mass. Oh, no, 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 no. This is a much more personal religion in its approach. This is a smaller space the public has access to where they can come, give tributes to the big ice statue, as well as light candles or sit and feel the presence of the jewel gods they praise. All narrative elements of the religion that were created, basically just because those were the decorations we put down. The last room we worked on was the museum. At the beginning of the quest, the party are required to come get an artifact from somewhere in the tower. So I wanted to have it visually here. I decided to make this A, a museum and B on the bottom floor for a couple reasons. Firstly, I want the party to have never been to the second floor or higher before they break in. Secondly, I wanted it to be a museum the public has access to because this town is ostentatious about showing their religious power and wealth. So having these valuable artifacts visible to the public makes them a constant reminder and demonstrates their status in town. It also reinforces that this town is safe and the religious oligarch's desire to escalate the trade war by having the party destroy a ship is a massive step up and something the town won't expect and in turn will be heavily against. And with this, we finished the map. Here are the four floors in all their glory. The last thing to discuss though is some of the traps and available loot we left around the map. Obviously the DM is free to insert whatever they like, but here are some that have been specifically placed. On level two, we have this holy pistol on one of the side tables. Similarly, in the weapons vein, there are the vampire hunting gear up in the oligarch's room. These could be powerful weapons or purely ornamental. Either way, they are on the map. As far as potions and magical ingredients go, there is the aforementioned unique crate on floor three in the storage room that the party can investigate, as well as the alchemist room on floor four. Cash money-wise, at the very end of the tower, the last oligarch's bedroom, there are a number of valuable gems gems, coins, and jewelry that they can snatch if the party decide to go all the way to the end. Also, there are obviously quite a few bookcases and scrolls scattered around so the DM can do whatever they want there. Lastly, there are a few opportunities for traps, but the main one is the prison on level one being designed for a teleportation trap. When the party maybe enters an area they shouldn't or attempts to steal an item of particular value or anything else, they are teleported to this room. The reason I put the prison on the bottom floor rather than in a building somewhere else is to have it on the same map so the party and the DM can play around with trying to break out the person that is teleported there. And that is all you need to know about this Temple Tower map. I'm really, really keen to break it out in my own game. And if you are too, then you can check out the Patreon where this map, along with all my resources, are available. Also, if you like this content, then subscribe to the channel because there will be more weekly D&D resource creation just like this. Lastly, you can check out the Twitch if you want to help make these resources live. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.